B.J. McGivern signed a national letter of intent to play football for Pitt State just months after the Gorillas captured the 1991 NCAA Division II National Championship. The Topeka native would make an immediate impact on special teams for the Gorillas in 1992, and by the time he completed his career in 1995, McGivern's senior season produced the best year ever by a Pitt State linebacker. Well, B.J., <clears throat> when we recruited him, of course, his, his, his dad, his dad and I, Jack, we, we sat and we tried to negotiate BJ's future as far as scholarship and how much it was. And then, of course, Jack was like, you're not offering him near enough because he's going to be a great player for you. I guarantee you he's going to be a good player. Well, BJ, and if you ask him himself, and he may talk about it today, when he came to Pittsburgh State, he ran 4840 and weighed 205 pounds. And then four years later, uh, he's probably about 220 and ran 4540. You know, so he spent a lot of time uh, getting his skills and waiting his time to play. And when he got the opportunity, there was no one better at his position than B.J. McGivern. McGivern played in all 15 games for the Gorillas as a true freshman in 1992 and established himself as an impact player on special teams, delivering hard hits and flying down the field on kickoff coverage. And that hard-nosed attitude would continue throughout his career as he honed skills and grabbed spot duty behind veteran linebackers Cooper Harris and Andy Sweet before emerging as a frontline player for the Gorillas in 1995. You know, I could be very entertaining when I talk about BJ, but you know what, everybody out here needs to know what a great football player he was. I don't think, well, I know that in my tenure from 1988 on, and I coached defense, you know, for several years, that we had a better player at the linebacker position than B.J. McGivern was in 1995. He was by far the best player at that position in the conference, and for any given year, he was the best linebacker at Pittsburgh State that we coached. Finally emerging from the shadows in 95, McGivern seized his opportunity to shine and made a profound impact for the Gorillas recording 112 tackles in Pitt State's 10 regular season games. McGivern earned MIAA Defensive Player of the Year honors while leading Pitt State to a conference title and NCAA playoff berth. And it was also in 95 that he would make a career-high 17 tackles in the regular season finale versus Northwest Missouri. And his efforts in the postseason only solidified his stature as one of the premier players in Division II that season. McGivern posted a career-best 19 tackles in a home playoff win over Northern Colorado, then added 18 tackles in a hard-fought 9-7 victory over North Dakota State in the national quarterfinals. He then made 13 stops, including four behind the line of scrimmage, as the Gorillas stunned Texas A&M Kingsville. And McGivern ended his career with a 10-tackle performance in a hard-fought loss to three-time national champion North Alabama in the title game on the Lions' home field in Florence, Alabama. McGivern made 77 tackles in his final five games, finishing the season with a school record 172 stops and earning first-team All-American honors from Football Gazette and the Division II Sports Information Directors. McGivern's free-spirited approach and love for the game of football kept daily life interesting in the Pitt State program. But in the final summation, McGivern's legacy will stand with him being remembered as one of the greatest players to wear a Pitt State uniform. You know, B.J. Is, was just physically tough, and uh, of course he put a lot of s smiles on my face and a lot of joy in my heart, and I, as I look at it, he put more smiles on my face and more joys in my heart than he did gray hairs on my head. But it was a close contest at some time. B.J. was, you know, just a, a very unique individual. If I had to look at him, I have to look at him like my son, Kyle and compare him to a racehorse. That if you take a spirited racehorse and you break his spirit, you end up with a plow horse. Thank goodness we never messed with BJ's spirit because he was fun loving, great to have around, a super player as far as leading by example. I mean, he's a great hitter, could run and enjoyed the game and enjoyed he enjoyed being a, uh, not only a gorilla, but he enjoyed being a Pittsburgh State student and enjoyed his four years at Pittsburgh State. And now, BJ, 
And you are responsible for a lot of these gray hairs, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Love you. And welcome to Pittsburgh State University Hall of Fame. Go Gorillas. Parents, family, and friends, coaches, and fellow inductees. As I stand here today, I am deeply humbled. And for those of those who know me, that is not a familiar feeling. <laughs> <laughs> to be inducted into the Pittsburgh State University's Athletic Hall of Fame is a huge honor and a true blessing. I would like to congratulate my fellow inductees on their induction and their accomplishments. It's a privilege to be in your presence and inducted with you today. I would also like to thank those Hall of Famers who have come before us. Their perseverance and dedication to the respective sports makes it even more special to be in our study for your final exams like you're right on the goal line, getting ready to score a touchdown. Finish strong was his message, which is one I've never forgot and still using my daily life. I started playing football in third grade under the direction of Coach John Egan. I knew from the moment I stepped on the field, football would be a part of my life for a very long time. Starting out as a lineman and eventually ending up in my linebacker position. I always dreamed football would take me far, but I'm so lucky and thankful that it led me to this fine university into today. And back to the Hall of Fame. One thing I know for sure, no one gets here alone. So there are some very special people I'd like to recognize today. These people not only molded my football talents, they molded me into the man that stands before you today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank them for their guidance, encouragement, inspiration, patience, and dedication to my success and my football career. But never expecting anything in return, you pushed me to my limits, as I am sure I pushed you to yours. <laughs> I would not be standing here today without each and every one of you. My mother, Margie, and father, Jack. John Egan. Tom Stringer. Bobby Tall. My linebacker coach, Larry Hurst, too fast. Mike McGreevy, Jerry Kill, Tim Beck, Chuck Boyles, my college roommates Kyle Roberson, Brad Homer, and Michael Bollinger. My brothers John, Mark, Tim, and Ryan. My favorite sister, Lynn. And all the players and coaches I was fortunate to play with. To my parents, my beautiful wife, Julie, and our two children, Jackson and Presley Jane, and all the rest of my family, it means the world to have you here today. Your support and dedication to my success has always been unwavering, from showing up to every football game through guiding me in my life. I could not and would not be here without you. Your unconditional love and support made it possible for me to pursue my dreams. I hope you all realize how much I appreciate everything you've done. 